My name is Amy Belling, and I've been working in the film industry since 1996. My grandfather and my great-grandfather were both photographers in Germany, so I think it kind of runs in the family. For me, cinema is magic, and when I was a kid, my parents used to have a friend dress up as Santa Claus and parade around on the roof with reindeer and bells, and so I'm very nostalgic for anything in life that creates that kind of magical universe. And for me, that is storytelling through filmmaking and cinematography. Cinematography was what I gravitated towards because I liked taking photos and finding a frame and looking at lighting and color and telling those stories through the image. I did a film production program in my high school and then I went to the University of British Columbia and did the film production program. Started working for five years in the industry and then I did my master's at the American Film Institute in Los Angeles. And my master's was in cinematography. For me, I feel like film should have a very cohesive visual language, and I think that the marriage of production design, costume design, um, color, and everything should all like make sense in one universe. And so I bring that to the table, like makeup and hair and wardrobe, everything should sort of be unified. Um, so I'm very precise in, in that kind of visual language when I am shooting, working with my collaborators. I consider myself like a citizen of the world, so I love traveling and experiencing new things and looking at light and color and cultures and people. I've traveled since I was five years old, and I, it's, the, it's sort of the most important thing to me outside of cinematography. And I feel like I bring those experiences and the way that I look at the world to the projects that I shoot. The primary role of the cinematographer is to be a storyteller and to collaborate with your director, producer, AD, gaffer, camera team, everybody on the set, and then also to be a great leader. And to inspire all of the collaborators that you're working with to be their best self. On set, I think the big struggle is always like time and budget and crew size and having the resources that you need to achieve um, what you want to achieve. Also, a huge struggle for me on set is working with people that are no people. I feel like it just goes against everything that I am. I'm like, yes before no. I want to try to achieve everything. I want to try to achieve greatness. And I need collaborators who are yes people, who are going to work with me, not against me. And I feel like I've encountered that a few times, and that's always a repeated struggle. So it's about finding those collaborators that are on your team, that are excited, that have the same vision that you have that gets your in your head and understands you and wants to work together to create an exciting visual world. Fear probably stops most people from pursuing what they want and especially women in cinematography I think maybe it's these old patriarchal ideas uh, that have been ingrained into us over decades from maybe our parents or from our partners, that women should be at home having children and taking care of the family and we can't go out into the universe and work 12 to 14 to 16 hours a day, five days a week and have a successful career and also be a woman with a family or kids. I think that's a huge thing that stops people from going forward and becoming a cinematographer. listen to yourself and you don't listen to those other people and you just make your dreams come true and go for it. Everyone can do exactly what they want to do in this world and that we are given like one chance to be here and if we want to be creative storytellers and go out there and do a job that less than two percent of the people in this industry are doing as a woman we should go out and do that and build those numbers and break down those glass ceilings. I love people and I love stories and I love psychology and I consider myself to be very open and a good collaborator, a good listener, um, a good leader and I love storytelling. I love figuring out the psychology of characters and their arcs 
and figuring out what the best way is to visually tell that story through an arc and does it relate to color and music or camera movement or you know how are we achieving this story and these characters arcs through the visual medium and I like figuring out through like testing are we doing this arc through different lenses or different lighting or different gels, different colors, different camera moves. Like, what does that mise-en-scene look like? And figuring out with the director how to shot list that into a visual universe that best represents where the characters are emotionally in the story. I think all cinematographers are problem solvers. I think we have to think very quickly on our feet all the time. I mean, we always have to have a plan. Most of the movie is made in prep and I feel like we can go in with a plan, but we everything's going to be just randomly kind of changing as we go, and it's organic, and you have to be able to think on your feet and problem solve and figure out the best solution. But one of the best parts of that is if you go in with a really good plan and you know the intention behind it, if you're thrown like a curveball that changes everything, you in your gut you know what the original intention of that scene or that shot or that moment was and you're easily able to like figure out what the best way to move forward is. The biggest lesson that I've learned again and again and again is to just trust my gut. It's always right. All artists struggle from like imposter syndrome of you're gonna go on to set and you're, everyone's gonna know that you don't know what you're doing. Right, and I think that is especially true for like the beginning stages of your of anyone's career as an artist, and it's that aha moment of not sleeping the night before your first day on a new job and feeling nervous, and you walk onto the set and you wonder, are you going to remember everything? Are people going to figure out that you don't know what you're doing? And then within five, ten, fifteen minutes, you're like, oh. I totally know what I'm doing. I've got this and it all just disappears. It's almost like in theater when you're behind the curtain and then you aren't sure if you're gonna remember all your lines. And then as soon as you walk onto that stage, everything is just there. You, you know it all, you know all the lines, you know your role and you can rock it. And that just anxiety just disappears and goes away and you're like, aha, uh -huh. remember, you've got this. <laughs> The highlight of my career was a short film that I shot on 35mm, the very first time I shot on 35 and it was the saddest boy in the world, premiering at the Toronto International Film Festival, and my mom was my date, and she was actually in one of the scenes as a suburban mother, and she got to see herself projected on 35 at the Toronto Film Festival, um, that was really special. The technical side of cinematography has changed as we've moved from film to digital, but the methodology is the same. The like, concepts behind visual language and storytelling and shot construction um, is all the same. It's just the tools are different. There's a lot more women in the camera department in general, and I think that there's a lot more women and diverse storytellers that are directing or producing or show running which is great, and that keeps changing and building over time. Yeah. Especially with different government initiatives, the diverse storytellers is growing, and I think that's exciting. I think the biggest pet peeve I have in our industry, and specifically having a career in cinematography, is people that are hiring you, looking at your resume, saying, well, you've never done this exact type of thing before, so we can't hire you to do this exact thing. It's like all of your experiences can like meld together to have you be ready for the next new experience. I don't think that you need to have exactly done that genre or that project specifically in scope in order to be able to be successful. So I would love to see people take more risks on cinematographers who have a certain background in letting them explore other genres or other mediums and hiring them to do that because we have the skill set. We can totally do it. We, we don't need to be pigeonholed in one genre or one medium. It would be great if more risks were taken on newer cinematographers as well. More than specific 
filmmakers, I really want to collaborate with artists who have a very distinct, strong voice and like are confident storytellers who are really creative collaborators. And I just want to work with people who are appreciative and excited that they get to be an artist in this industry, in this point in our, you know, lives. And yeah, work with people who are passionate and inspired, who inspire me to do my best too. I've worked on a few projects that are entirely geared towards let's hire 100% women. And I don't think it's necessarily the best. Um, I think that it's good to have a mix of men and women. I think there's a nice balance to the different energies. Having women in the lighting or grip department keeps the men more honest and you know, just makes for a better environment in general. My ideal would be to have like 50% men, 50% women. It never really works out that way in grip or electric, but I've been successful at that in the camera department because I find that here in Vancouver anyways, there's a lot more women in the camera department than in grip and electric. The other projects that I really would like to work on are bigger budget studio films, more international. I am based in Vancouver and part-time in Los Angeles, and I'd ideally love to work on more projects that take me to further remote locations. It's important that if you want to become a cinematographer that you just go for it. And I was always given great advice from my parents and my teachers to just follow my dreams and do exactly what I wanted. And my favorite high school teacher of film production told me like this motto always, the sky's the limit. And that's like how I based my sort of career path on her saying the sky's the limit. So I think if I was to give advice to new young female cinematographers, it's that, just go for it.